basically, the plan for this afternoon, uh, I'll introduce myself briefly, is we're going to do 50 minutes of some basic theory, groundwork, just get everyone on the same page when it comes to what SEO is, how it works, why we do it, those sorts of things. And then we're going to have 40 minutes of I'm going to come and help you answer questions, queries, you can look at things, uh, things you might not understand. There's a couple of different areas that we can look at, uh, but we're really just going to try and make it work for, for you guys and try and address the problems that you have. Uh, so if you can bear with me for 50 minutes, we're going to go through quite a few slides. Hopefully they're entertaining. Um, and then we can break up and do some more things a little bit more practical. Uh, my name is Charles. I am a digital strategist at a company called Flickleap. Uh, recently just finished doing my master's in digital advertising, uh, digital marketing, uh, which I think I finished last week. So I'm still recovering from that one. Uh, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I think I know one or two things about what I'm talking about. If I am wrong or I say something incorrect, please just tell me otherwise. So let's get going. There we go. All right, so an overview of search engine marketing. So search engine marketing is pretty much anything to do with advertising um, or marketing through search engines. So there's two or three main categories. Um, you've got paid search, which is where you're paying to put your adverts into a search page uh, set of results. Then you've got local SEO, so that's things that help you find things that are close to you. So Google Maps, for instance, or Waze, or things like that. If they show an ad or do something, that's local SEO. You're trying to find something that's right where you are, or where your company is. And then you have search engine optimization, and that's broken up into two sub-components. So the one is called on-page, and that's all the technical, boring stuff about have you dotted, the, dotted your I's, crossed your T's, put everything that you can put in place in the right place, uh, and that's on your website. So it's completely within your control. Off-page SEO is a whole nother animal. That's everything that happens off your website, but points into your website. And I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go. So here's an example, uh, it's quite a nice one, of all the different components. So at the very top, you can see there's an ad. So I searched for Kia Bryanston. So we've got a paid search ad up at the top here. Then below that, we have an organic result. So this is not paid for, uh, and that's their actual website. Below that is a cars.co.za website. So this is an off-page SEO someone else is linking to their website. So it's not on their website. Their website is this Kia Bryanston. This is something else, but it points to their website. And then on the right-hand side here, so this is obviously for desktop, you can see it says Kia Bryanston. So this is some pictures if you want to get directions, some reviews around the branch, and a couple of other different things. Everyone happy? You've probably seen this before. Maybe once, twice in your lifetime. Cool. So... Here's an introduction. The first thing you need to know is who's who when it comes to search engines. The short answer is everyone uses Google and forget the rest. <laughs> right, why is SEO important? So SEO is all about trying to get your website to be optimized or ready or in the best possible shape for a search engine to come and find you. And the better you can do that, the more you can optimize it, the better you will come up in search engine results. So people are searching for things all the time. Uh, stats are people use their phones 200 times a day. So people are always picking up their phone. They're always searching for something all the time. It never stops. If you're at a bry, someone says something silly, you're like, well, we should research that. What do you do? You take out your phone and you search for it. it it's part of what we do. I think... One of the things that we find with SEO and websites and those sorts of things is people don't even realize how much they do this. You do this all day. I'm going to say something, or you're going to see something, and you're going to go like, hey, I wonder about that. There might be like a shiny object. Someone's probably going, hey, there's a pot plant. Where do you get pot plants for your health? That's going to happen during the course of today. You do it all the time. And so to get this right is quite important for your business. Uh, I was chatting to some people at lunch, and we were saying, you know, one of the nice things about 
SEO is that when the ads stop, you stop paying for your budget, your SEO still runs. Um, and you don't have to pay for it, so that's also very nice. So the key thing here is where you come up in the results. Stats are that if you come up, number, come up first, you're going to get 38% of the clicks on average, then roughly half of that for second place, and then in some results it halves again almost, but it's 11% in your third result. And here's the most important one. If you're on the top of the second page, you're going to get 2% of all the click-throughs. There's a very old, very bad joke that I tell all the time. Where do you hide a dead body? On the second page of Google. Because <laughs> no one is looking there. So this, the important thing that you need to know is you need to be hopefully in the top three results. Beyond that, you're not going to get too much love from your search engine uh, results. And also, just to bear in mind, if we go back uh, to this example, this is, my, this is a screenshot of my computer screen. You've got an ad, so that's at the top. Then we have the first result, and then we have the second result. If you were in third place, you don't even come up on the home page of my screen. You've got to, I've got to scroll down to get to number three. Forget number 10. Number 10 would be like in the parking lot. Okay, cool. So, how do search engines work before we get completely and horribly distracted? There's three things that happen. The first thing is Google sends out what they call the Google bot, and it goes all over the internet and it finds things. It just, they call it crawling, it's a bit creepy, um, but it goes around trying to find stuff. And literally, what it does is it goes from one link and then it goes to that page, and if there are links on that page, then it clicks through all of those links and goes to another link. Make sense? And then it just bounces around and starts off until it try, tries to find everything. Then once they've gone and they've crawled all the websites that they can find, they then go and index them. So it's a little bit like a library where they've just got cards for days. And these are all the different things and that's what they say. And then, this is the real magic of it, you go and search for something. How high is it to space? It's four kilometers in case you're wondering. I got it horribly wrong. Um, uh, and <laughs> I'm distracting myself. Um, they go and show you the search results. So they crawl everything, then they order it and sequence it. They call it indexing. And then when you want to look for it, they come and serve you with the results that they find are most relevant to what you are searching for. There's rumor of this mysterious 200 factors that Google uses to rank things. The reality is, is that no one actually knows. It's Google's proprietary, special, secret, magic, mystery thing that they use to make lots and lots of money. They don't let people know, they don't tell you, because if you know, you can then find a way around it to cheat. And they don't want you to cheat because they want people to trust it, which is something I'll talk about in a bit. So no one knows. So if you've heard of 200 factors or any of those sorts of things, I'd just like to use the quote from Pirates of Caribbeans where they say that there are more, the code is more what you'd call guidelines than actual rules. No one actually knows. People have ideas, there are lots of commentators with lots of theories, but no one really knows. So, when people want kittens, we, we give them puppies. It might sound silly, but this is really the crux of the entire search engine industry. And if you have a look, I typed in, I actually had to go and do some Photoshop skills here, you would be very proud of me. I wrote kittens at the top there, but then I took the search results page for puppies. If you wanted a kitten and you typed kittens into Google and they gave you puppies, what would you think of Google? They're not switched on. They don't know what they're doing. Are you going to go back and use this again if this is the results you keep getting? No, you're not. So, this is what Google does. When people want, want kittens, Google gives you kittens. And you can see there's some, I don't know, somehow that puppy snuck in there because there's a kitten, but anyway. <laughs> it's a little cheeky Dutchwind. <clears throat> so that's what they do. They give you what you want. So if, any, if you take anything out of today, forget everything else I say, please just remember this one simple thing. People are happy when they find what they are searching for. You are a person, apply this to yourself. 
Happy people will come back to Google because they know that they will find what they're searching for. Yes? Everyone with me so far? Okay, cool. If people keep coming back to Google, Google can auction ad space and earn revenue. So they make money if you keep coming back. And then lastly, the higher the number of people using Google, the more value their ad space. So there's a reason why Google sells more advertising space than any other company in the world by quite a large factor. And it's because they're very good at giving you what you want. So the short answer is, happy people means happy Google. So if you have a website or an online store or anything that's on the internet, you want to make people happy. If you make people happy, you will make Google happy. Make sense? So with all the rules and the ideas and the coding and the tips and the layouts and the this and the that and the funky metadata, oh goodness, funky metadata, just make people happy. What is your page about? What is your website about? Use those words. If someone is looking for you, what words would they use? Use those words. Make sense? Because if that's what someone's looking for, Google's going to go through your site and say, hey, this is what they're looking for, and they're going to match you up. And you're going you're to get people who want what you have. So I know it seems overly simplistic, but if you can use this one thing as a guide for everything else you do, you should get pretty good traction and pretty good results. Happy? Can I ask questions? I'm not afraid. Unless they're going to distract me horribly. Unless I don't want them. All right, so there's two sides to this. We said there's on-page SEO and there's off-page SEO. And we're going to go through the two different types. So say all the right things, and that's on your website. So if you've got a page, what is that page about? What are you trying to achieve? What, who are you trying to reach? Write down the words. What is this page about? This page is about, you'll see I've got an example, writing a blog. So if it's about writing a blog, use the word blog and how to write a blog. And then use that consistently throughout the whole page. So don't go and change from blog to article or to story or to use other words and swap them out because now you're diluting what it's about. Whatever it's about, just make it about that one thing. Keep it simple. All right, so here's an example of a page. So in the title tag up at the top, it says blog, SEO 101. Then in the URL, it says blog, SEO 101. You guys seeing a theme here? Hopefully you are. In the meta description, I'll show you how to do this later if you don't know how to do it. You can't see it on the front. It's in the back. It says, take a look at some basic blog SEO tips that will help you get your articles higher ranked on search engine, page, search engine result pages and therefore more widely read. So that says SEO blog. Cool. In the H1 tag, the first heading, it says blog SEO 101. Alt tag, so that's because Google can't read pictures or see pictures, it reads the text behind it. We've labeled this picture as a blog SEO picture. Then we've got other headings that refer to it. And then in the body, the actual text of the page, we refer to blog and SEO. There's no confusion what this page is about. When Google goes and has a look at this page, there's no way on earth they could miss the fact that we are talking about blog SEO. It's nice and simple. It's consistently applied through everything. And if you're a user, you can read the title and you know what this page is about. You can read the URL and you know what this page is about. You can read the heading. You can read the text. You can look at the image. doesn't matter where you go. You know what it's about. It's easy to use. So hopefully, people who read this are happy. And if people are happy, Google's going to be happy. Make sense? We can make these slides available, so don't worry too much about making too many notes if you need to. Cool. So, a couple of tips that we picked up along the way. Use your company name as text. This might sound a bit strange, but there are a lot of companies out there whose logo is a picture. 
and then they go and put the picture everywhere on their website. But Google can't read pictures. So what happens when Google goes through the page is your company name is not mentioned once. This often happens on home pages because you've got like this big picture of your logo in the middle and then you say, we are all about super fast service and wonderful results and a whole bunch of other things. We started in 1922 or something. But you never go and say the name of your company. So if Google reads that page, how are they going to know it's about your company? Put your name in there, write it down. Cool. Then use re, uh, redirects. Okay, so if you don't know, if you've got the www in front and you don't have the www in front, Google sees that as two websites. Google hates doubles or duplicates because now they don't know what to do. Do I send people to www or do I send people to non-www? Make sense? They don't know where to go, so they don't like you. Can you just choose one? And then they're happy because they're like, oh, okay, so you want everyone from here to go to there. It doesn't matter which one you use, just have one. Make sense? General rule of thumb, it's got this, the same sort of thing happens with canonical pages. You've got two products in two different categories. Just have one that gets pointed to because otherwise they don't know what to do. Google doesn't like confusion. They want people to be happy and they want them to get the best result. They don't want to have to choose. Uh, have an SSL certificate. I don't know if you've seen, but some browsers now actually have like a little not secure thing that comes up. That doesn't really make people happy when they go to your website and, br and the browser says not secure. So that will help you. It's also good for your search results. Google is very big on mobile. Um, most people we speak to don't think about mobile. They design on their, web, on their desktop computer. They test it on their desktop computer. They show their clients it on their desktop computer. The client checks it on their desktop computer, and 75% of the users are going on their phone. Take your desktop and kick it in the bin and take your phone out and start testing stuff because that's where people are, and Google ranks you on your mobile friendliness, and they've got a whole bunch of cool tools to help you with that. Um, so don't forget that. Page load speed, again, happy people, happy Google. If your website takes 30 seconds to load, Google's going to say, I don't want to send people there because they're going to have a bad experience. So make your website fast. Uh, link your website to Google Search Console. I'll show you how to do that. Submit your sitemap to Google. I'll show you how to do that. Just one thing just to bear in mind. There's almost like a misnomer around the internet. Uh, it's almost like if I make a website and I put it on the internet, people will find me. No, they won't. No one knows. And probably no one will care until you make them care and you make them know. It's the equivalent of going and building a Gucci store in the middle of, I don't know, Mulder's Drift or somewhere in the bush. If people don't go there, you're going to get no one in your store. You have to get people there. You have to tell them that they exist. And the easiest way to do that is just to tell Google that you exist. Just put your hand up and say, hey, Google, I have a website. Come and crawl it. They will find it eventually because they've got that little bot that crawls around everywhere. But you don't want to have to wait three, four months for Google to find you. As soon as your website's up, just go say, hey, here we are. Make sense? I am using strong and emotive language. So please do not be too offended with me if you use a desktop computer or you don't any of these things. I am just trying to make a point. Then there are some cool things. Don't worry too much about this when it loads. Where you can tell Google specifics. So if you have a recipe, there's a whole library around that says, well, this is the recipe title, and this is uh, the ingredients that are used. And then when Google searches it, I don't, you've probably seen this. Like These things pop up, and it says like all this like extra information in the search bar. It's called, um, oh wait, this is not even that. That's another slide. Ah, I just saw code and went off on a tangent. That one. It's called micro-tagging. So this one is a movie. So you go and say, well, this is the name of the movie, and that's the description of the movie, and this is where the movie's showing, and that's the cinema number it's on, and you go and put all this extra information into it, and you give it like these little tags, and then those tags tell Google a little bit more about what it is. Uh, it's called schema. S-C-H-E-M-A.org. 
There are libraries for days about what you can and cannot do and all that kind of thing. If you do have very detailed information, these are really worth having a look at, uh, but they are a little bit more advanced. Another nice thing to do, uh, it's called social recognition, uh, is you actually, on your website, you tell Google that you have social platforms. So I think we once had a website where there was a company with a similar name and they had a Facebook page in Brazil. And every time you searched for the company, they, this Facebook page for another company in Brazil would come up. And their website was quite good looking and the Brazilian social profile was quite not good looking. And so this is a way that you can say, hey Google, here's my Facebook page or my Twitter page or my Instagram page or any of those sorts of things. It's just a nice way of giving them a little bit more information. Uh, like I said, we can give you all of this so you don't have to write it all down. Some tags. So I mentioned uh, canonical or duplicated content. Literally what it means is you have it in two places and you just tell Google, just use this one. Again, they don't like doubles, they just want one. Um, oh, no index tags basically say don't read this page. So if you've got a test site, tell Google not to index it. <laughs> okay, funny story, I'll tell you. Uh, we, did a, we did a work for some company a little while ago, and their hosting company, for some reason, took a snapshot of their website and then hosted it on some weird subdomain. And then what happened, it got indexed by Google, and people started going to their website. And they kept phoning us and saying, people are filling out forms with pricing from two years ago, and we're telling them the prices are wrong and that they have to pay more. And the people are saying, no, it's on your website. And we're like, what? And we're like, we have no idea what is going on. We can't find this thing anywhere. And then he goes and finds out that actually there was this whole other website that the hosting company had created that people were finding, filling out the form and then trying to pay fees from two years ago. So this one's quite helpful for testing pages. You could choose your language. So that's kind of helpful, especially if you've got multiple languages on your website. So English, Afrikaans, Zulu, French, whatever it might be. Uh, and then you can also just tell them who you are. So if it's, you do a lot of content, like you can tell them that you're a publisher, give them some information. You've got all these little extra things you can add in just to give Google a bit more information about who you are. Uh, it is more advanced stuff. You don't normally need to do this. Okay, cool. Things to avoid. So I did say please pay attention for 50 minutes because I'm going to talk about a whole lot of stuff. Uh, so bear with me. We're doing well. Good stuff. All right, so keyword stuffing. Don't go and use keywords as many times as you can use the word keyword as because you want to get as many keywords into one sentence because then the lots of keywords are there for people to read because you want them to read the keyword. No one reads that. People <laughs> give, make people happy. Give them language that they understand. Don't go and stuff stuff in there because you think if you use the word lots and lots of times, Google will go, oh, look, they used the word 10 times. That must be the website we must send people to. No, is it relevant? Does it add value? Is it people going to find it interesting? Google's not just sending people to places where they think there's lots of information. They want it to be relevant. Because remember, you were searching for kittens, and if Google sends you somewhere that has puppies, you don't like Google. Google wants you to find what you're looking for. So don't go and try to stuff things in there. Uh, hidden text is something from the old days. Basically, you go write a whole bunch of things in white font on a white page. So you can't see it, but the words are there. Google's onto you. Don't do that. Uh, cloaking. It's when you, it's a little bit more advanced, you get your website to show one page to the uh, search engine bot, and then you swap it out with something else when the people come. It's like bait and switch. Google's onto you. Don't do that either. Sneaky redirects. So this one's like you get someone to go to your page, and as they get to your page, you send them somewhere else. Don't do that either. Again, Google wants people to find what they're looking for. They don't want them to go to a page and then get sent somewhere else to see something they shouldn't. Poor or fake content. Well, there's lots of uh, fake content in the news at the moment. Uh, don't do that. Uh, automated, automatically generated content. Again, not helpful. Don't try and be too clever about this. Spamming comments, backlink farming or link schemes. Um, so you probably got an email from someone from another country uh, in Asia, India, where they said, hi, I saw your great article. If you put my article on your website, I'll put you on my website. 
it's, it's basically all you're trying to do is trying to create links for the sake of creating links. It's not actually helpful. So that was everything about what you can do on your website. There's no reason for you not to get full marks for what you can do on your website because it's completely within your control. Things that happen outside of your website, not so much control over because someone else could put your link onto another website. Um, recently, I was going through backlinks to our website and I found another website where they had copied our website <laughs> with a link to our website. I mean, I we can't do anything about that. I mean, they, it's somewhere else on the internet and there's nothing we can do um, other than buying as many domain names as possible. But So outside, you don't have too much control. On your website, you do have control. So do take time to try to get that right, but you'll see this is also quite important. So Google invented something called page rank. And basically, it's a large interconnected system where everyone points to everyone else, and everyone else's rankings give you weight based on what everyone else says. So it constantly updates and changes, but effectively what it boils down to is references. So the example I like to use is if I went for a job interview and I had a letter of reference from my old boss and I had a letter of reference from my mom, the person who's interview would be interviewing me would say, well, the one from your boss has probably got more authority, it's got more value, more weight behind it. The one from your mom, it's quite sweet and nice, but I'm not really going to put too much credit into what your mom says. Make sense? And Google does the same thing. So if there's a website out there that's got a lot of authority or uh, Moz calls it uh, domain, no, domain authority, um, then they'll say, well, if they're pointing to you, then you must also have authority. Does that make sense? So if my boss would recommend me and my boss has authority, then I must have authority because my boss said I do. Make sense? And basically, that's how most of it works. So... Maybe the best way to explain this is an example. We had a client, they are uh, uh, tertiary education, and they registered as CFA, I uh, don't know if you've heard of CFA Institute in America, Chartered Financial Analyst. It's a very big program, it's similar to CAs. And they were registered as certified trainers for the CFA Institute in South Africa. When that happened, the CFA Institute put a link on their website to this institution's website as an accredited partner. You guys got me. CFA Institute puts a link to these guys on their website. The moment that happened, our clients' search engine uh, results, all of them went up. Because all of a sudden, they had this naughty badge or this vote of confidence from a very large, well-known, very big public American organization. Does that make sense? So like it, that authority got transferred down to them. All right? Make sense? Okay, cool. I'm getting nods, so this is good. And that's pretty much how it works. So Google assesses your website based on the other websites that point into your website. And you can actually track and see all the websites that point into your website, and you can, get a, you can see how, they, how you're tracking from that point of view. They call that a backlink. So it's a link back to your website from another website. That link that points in. So what happened in the old days? Everyone went and got as many links as they possibly could. And that's where that link farming thing came in. They just go make websites for days that just had links pointing into your website because Google is just counting the number. The number nowadays doesn't help you so much. It's more about the quality. So Google actually assesses, they go have a look at that link and say, are these guys any good? Yes or no? If they're good, okay. And then they pass it on to yourself. You guys following me? So do you, if you have an agency or you make websites for other people, put a link at the bottom of your website? No, do you, uh, put a link on every website that you make in the footer to your website. Do you do that? Has anyone done that? Okay, you've just gone and put your website onto a whole bunch of other websites that are completely irrelevant to your website. So now you've got lots of links, but they've got nothing to do with you. 
And unfortunately, with this new algorithm that came in from Google, they now say, oh, your website's out there, but uh, you have a range of clients. So maybe it's a vet, for instance. What has your website got? You're an agency. What have you got to do with a vet? Nothing. Why do you have that pointing into you? And actually, what it looks like you're doing is link farming, because now you put your website onto a whole bunch of things that have nothing to do with you. So you can keep it there, but then you need to add that little no index tag that says to Google, don't, it's actually no follow. Don't, don't give me any credit, or take it off. But just uh, something to, we noticed that. All of a sudden, our results just tanked, and we were like, what happened? And then we went and found out that actually we had just shot ourselves in the foot. So one of the things we'll talk about is backlink strategies. How do you go about getting, they actually, so it's called link juice. So what happens is you've got all these other websites out. Honestly, people in the digital domain come up with the craziest names for things. Why can't we have like simple names? It's like link juice. I was chatting to someone at lunch about a, a monkey bot or something. Like no one can name it. I think there's a SEO tool called Screaming Frog. <laughs> like it's a legitimate business. Screaming frog. Anyway, I don't know. We come up like I think it's like a competition. Do you can look the sound the silliest? Anyway, uh, that's a little personal thing. Don't mind me. All right. So all these different cups represent other websites, and then what happens is that juice passes through down to your website. So a great way if you're struggling to get your um, to get good traction from your uh, SEO or the content that you have is a press release because. News agencies have very, very good uh, domain or link juice because they've got a very big cap. They've got lots of followers. So if you can get an article on their website that links to your website, that all that good, good link juice passes down to you. Uh, it's also if you get some bad press. So we've had one or two people where a news story gets out that's not good for them or whatever it is, and now whenever you search for them, that comes right up at the top. How do you compete with that? Well, go to a newspaper and pay them a little bit of money. They can write an article about you, and then you can try and push those results down uh, if that ever happens. Hope never. So this is the second time I've done this talk. I'll show you into some of my sneakiness. We did this talk at a meetup earlier in the year. If you don't know about WordPress meetups, I highly recommend you join. They happen once a month, and it's a really good place for you to come and meet like-minded people like yourselves, and there's some really good topics that's spoken about, a whole range of excellent uh, people come and speak at them. I was one of them. <laughs> and it's also a really nice place just to find out how things are going, uh, news in the industry, all that kind of stuff. It's called Meetup uh, WordPress. So we were doing a talk on SEO. So I gave my little description about what it is, and I put a link to our website in there. And then, guess what? Google picked it up. So how do we track it? I'll show you search, con uh, well, this is the old search console. Google's now made a new search console. Well, they're in the process of making it. They're like halfway in between the two. Um, so it, you can't really read it here, but it says Meetup. So we were sneaky. We went and got our website on another website, and Meetup's a pretty good website. So then their link juice started coming through to us. It's just a... So think about it. What can you do to get your website? And again, relevance is key. So we're talking about SEO. So this is all about SEO. And this is all about SEO. And that links through to us. And we do SEO. So it's relevant. This is a nice one. I was very proud of myself for this, in case you're wondering. Cool. Um, so Google has a couple of algorithms. I called it the birds and the bees. They've got penguin, um, panda. Uh, hummingbird, and pigeon. That's just basically updates they've made over the years. Basically what's happened is over the years, people have come up with ways to try and circumvent how Google does things, to try and get themselves artificially higher in the results. When that happens, Google works it out, they release a new algorithm or do something to make it better. Um, and that's why when I talk about relevance, I think that was, was Panda. Yes, Panda sought to improve the quality of Google search results by removing or reducing the ranking of duplicate, duplicate content, thin pages, and low-quality domains. So Panda was all about trying to get rid of lots and lots of stuff that's not necessarily of value and focusing on the quality. Um, cool. Oh, and then um, you were asking a question about spelling words correctly and things like that. 
Hummingbird was all about trying to get the context. So let me think of a word that could be used in two ways. Space. So you've got space, stars in the sky. You've got like space as in like on the ground, like you can have like a workspace. It's the same word, but it's got completely different context. So Google actually started saying, well, we need to understand the context because someone who types in space, we need to give them the right space. Make sense? So they had an algorithm around that. And then Pigeon's all about local stuff. Okay, cool. So for the practical section, I don't know how many of you had a chance to prepare for this or look at it, but there's a couple of different things, uh, options that we can look at. Uh, the one is Google My Business. If you don't have a Google My Business profile, I highly recommend that you do. Type in Focus Rooms Sunning Hill or Bryanston or something like that, and you will see that one of the results that comes up and takes most of the page on your mobile phone is a Google My Business profile. It's free, so you want, it doesn't cost you anything. It has all sorts of good information on it, like if you've got a, a store, what time it opens or closes, directions to it, reviews. There's a whole range of different things you can do on it. If you don't have one, today is a good day for you to do it. Keyword research. So which words should you use and which words shouldn't you use? We can have a go at that. Uh, how you can review your website's SEO from top to bottom. So how are you tracking on your on-page stuff? We've got some tools for that one. Uh, WordPress plugins. What can you do on your WordPress site that's quick and easy just to make sure that your SEO is all in order? Uh, how to submit your sitemap to Google. Uh, review your SEO performance on Search Console. So the question's about how do I see the links that we have back to us. I can show you how to do that. And then ideas for generating backlinks because it's always uh, a tricky one. How do you get your website? So that was the list. I'll run through it now. Cool. So option number one, setting up a Google My Business profile. If you don't have one, you really want to get one of these. It also works on Google Maps. So that's other nice thing. Um, so you can get found in search results. And then also this finds its way into all sorts of things. So um, I don't know if you guys made an event in your calendar. If you typed, if you got Gmail or something like that and you type in focus group as location, this profile would have popped up. You didn't have to type in the actual address. So it has a whole range of applications. Uh, keyword research, so there's a whole bunch of different options. Uh, some of the guys are WooRank. I quite like WooRank because they're really simple and not that expensive. There's Moz, hugely comprehensive, probably the market leader. There's uh, Amazon's version called Ahrefs. And then there's another crowd that I found that's not too bad with a free option called KW Finder. Um, if you're trying to look around what keywords to use, and here's an example of why you want to do this research. So. Uh, this is the Google Ads platform. It's free to use, uh, so if you don't have access to it, you don't have to run ads. You can just go on onto Google Ads and open up an account. And if you click on Tools up the top there, okay, I'll come help you with this. You can go find the Keyword Planner. So I went and had a look in Santon, so just in Santon, in English. Over the last year, how many people searched for the word online store? And there was 70 people a month, and online shopping was 1,000. So we'll take 70. That's kind of the average. The number of times in Santon someone searched for online store. Uh, the question about how do you work out the click-through rates, this is probably about as close as I can get to giving you an answer in terms of like how many people search for things. Um, so online store, we got 70. Did the same search for e-commerce, and... I got 110, 140. So there were twice as many, roughly, if you take the 140 versus the 70. So if you're going to write a page about shopping online, you can either talk about having an online store or you can talk about an e-commerce store. And you can use the one as your thing. If you had to choose between two and you were focusing on the Santon area over the last year, I would say, based on this, Write it about e-commerce because there are twice as many people looking for it as there are people looking for online store. And you can do this for anything. Um, we once had a company, their whole big spin was on Insight. Everything Insight, Insight, Insight. We went and did some uh, research in terms of what keywords worked and we found that there are about 300 people a month who search for marketing Insight. 
we went and looked for marketing research, and there were 3,300 people who searched for marketing research. So our suggestion to them was, we know you're big on insight, but maybe try using marketing research, you're going to reach 10 times the number of people. Small change, but you can have a big result. And the other cool thing about this, it tells you what your competition's like. So there's not too much competition around uh, e-commerce, medium, uh, whereas online store, it's high. So actually, maybe you want to try e-commerce, there are more people and it's easier to get to the top. Cool, so that's keyword research. We can do some play around with that. A good SEO tool. So there's lots of little bits and pieces and to get it right is quite hard. So be lazy, or as some of my colleagues say, be smart lazy. And if you want a free tool to use, um, we hooked one up on our website. It runs off an account that we have. That's the domain, flickerleap.com forward slash free dash SEO dash report. And you can get a free SEO report. Um, it'll look like this. And basically what this thing does is it goes through your whole website, it gives you a score, says, oh, how are you doing? And then for every single factor that you need to worry about, it gives you, like, you need to improve this or fix this or tweak this, and you can also do it for pages within your website. So you don't have to go and try and read the metadata on the page and try to unpack every alt tag and go through all that kind of stuff. You can literally, um, this is uh, WooRank, in case you're wondering. Um, you can literally just pop it in here and it will give you a checklist that says maybe you should fix this or change this or do this. And then they often come up with like little helpful hints. So if you don't know what the words mean, they actually have a little thing that says title tag and it explains. A title tag is this, it should be this many characters long, and this is the purpose of it. Um, so if you're completely unprepared, pick a website and go through this. It will help you. Um, then we can talk about plugins. Uh, this is all-in-one SEO and Yoast SEO, two plugins on WordPress, both very, very good. Uh, Segan says that we must use that one, so we do. Um, Segan is Segan Davis. He's like a WordPress uh, hero. Cool, so Yo uh, Yoast SEO looks a little bit like this. So coming back to that page I showed you, it literally breaks it down and it helps you to put in all the things, and then it gives you nice little indicators. So this is good, this is bad. And again, the whole idea behind it is to make your life easy, so you don't have to understand all the technical things. You literally just pop it in here and it says, oh, this is too long, this is too short. Uh, you know, do you have enough words in it? You know, we're talking about keyword stuffing. It will actually tell you maybe a little bit less keywords, more keywords, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, all very, very easy to use if you have a WordPress website. Submit your site to Google. Uh, Google has a <coughs> what they call Search Console. Um, very interesting. If you want to know how Google has uh, indexed your website, go to the Google search bar and put in site, colon, and then your website address. So site, colon, and then whatever your website address is. And Google will show you search results of all the page, pages on your website that they have indexed. So if you're wondering why something's not coming up, or you don't know, you're unsure, you can literally go and see everything in Google search just by adding that little site colon thingy. Right, uh, Search Console looks like this. So if you're using WordPress uh, and Yoast SEO, your sitemap has actually got a different name. But literally you just say, this is our website, this is where our sitemap is, and you Google will say, hey, we, we checked it, we found all these pages, happy. Please, please, please do this. If you redo your website, go do this again. If you add a whole bunch of content to your website, go do this again. Don't wait for Google to come find you when you can just go tell them, hey, something big's happened. Um, and depending on how often you update your website, Google will either come back daily, weekly, monthly, or whatever it might be. But uh, it's really easy to do. It's worthwhile doing. Cool. And then you can also track things. So your backlinks, you can see how your performance is. So you can see, you can uh, like choose dates and countries and times. Uh, this country filter is often really important. Um, you can have all sorts of people coming from all over the place, but if your customers are all in South Africa, you only really want to know about South Africa. Um, and then you can see how many people clicked on stuff, how many times did you come up in the search results, 
Uh, what was your average position? So that's not very good. You know, on average, page 30, that's mean page 3. So no one's there. Um, but you can track it over time and see how things are going. And it just helps you keep an eye on these things. Okay, and through Search Console, it's quite nice and easy to do. And then things like this. You can actually go and say, on this page, how many people are pointing into, pointing into it? I told you about those guys who copied our website and then just had a link to us. It was these chops. <laughs> Sorry, maybe I shouldn't say that. Please erase the tape. Um, but again, you can see who's pointing into us, what's happening, where's the sort of traffic coming from. Cool. And then lastly, we can brainstorm some ideas if you want about building backlinks. So generally, have good content. Have content that people want to share. If people aren't interested, no one's going to share it. Make it interesting. All right. Um, some things that are really helpful, so like biz community, it's like got lots of South African businesses. It's just a nice, easy way of you getting your website onto another page. So business listings can help. Press releases, like I mentioned, these are great. If you can get uh, free, free press releases, that would be amazing. Sometimes you have to pay for them. It really depends. Uh, and then partner with other companies and influencers. Again, with this type of thing, it's really you want to be thinking out the box. What can we do? How can we get someone to talk about us? Um, and there's a whole range of different ways that you can go about doing that. Um, so those are my practical options. Do you want to pick one? Um, I can go through one at the front, or you guys can do stuff where you're at, and I can come help you. Okay, cool. So this is an example of an SEO report. Lots of companies can do this. This is just one way of doing it. You don't have to do it like this. Um, it's more about just saving yourself the time and the effort of having to work all of these things out yourself. So if I take our company's website, and we've got a score of 71, which in this is not too bad, but... Boo, to <laughs> <laughs> Boo yeah. Uh, all right. So title tag, that's the title tag. So we got that right, and it gives us a tick. And then meta description, it explains what that looks like. It then goes and says, this is what it could look like in Google. So you can very easily see the important things. You don't have to go and try and work all of this out or search for it or any of that kind of stuff. Headings, okay, we've been naughty. We've got two H1 headings. So Google doesn't like that because what's this page about? Is it about the one heading or the other heading? So we should have one. Hopefully someone will fix that. <clears throat> Keyword cloud, so here you can see this is all the words that are referenced on this page. And this sometimes is very, very interesting. So you're now saying people don't use the name of their company on that page. If that's not coming up in this, then you need to go and put your name of your company because Google's checking that. Yeah, so this keyword cloud, you it can quickly see tell you what the page is about. Uh, alt, alt tags. So have we gone and put alt tags on every single image? Yes, we did on all 82. So that's a nice one. Um, In-page links, so are we linking to other people? Broken links, there are no broken links. Do we have that WW resolve that I was talking to you about? Yes, we fixed that. Okay, we do have a robot.txt file, don't listen to this thing. We do have a sitemap, don't listen to this thing. Uh, underscores and URLs. This is an interesting one. If you use an underscore, it joins the two words together to make one long, weird word. Whereas if you use a dash, it's two separate words. So if someone's searching for something, say it's like uh, dog parlor. If you use dog underscore parlor, for someone to find that page, they would have to type into Google dog underscore parlor, because Google sees it as one word. If you used a dash, you could write dog parlor because it's either two words. Small thing, but can have a difference in how your URLs work. Um, and then literally, this thing goes through everything. Is it mobile friendly? Uh, how fast is it? Are you using technology? Like These are all things that have an impact on your SEO. Um, so Google have a mobile page speed test, uh, which is all about testing how fast your uh, page speeds is. If you have an online platform, there's a direct correlation between how much money you make and how fast your website is. 
Um, I can't remember the stats off the top of my head, but literally for every split second on average that an Amazon page loads faster, they make like an extra $100,000 or something like that. Like it's crazy because literally people, if, they don't, if it takes too long, they're not interested. Uh, and the same goes for just browsing websites and searching for things. So as right now, you can see that we're frustrated while we wait. Okay, let me just swap out. Uh, yes. Yes. Actually, most of our people who come to our website are on desktops. Uh, I think that's because they're looking for it at work. Where is this? Yeah, well, I think I would just suggest using the Google one. The only problem with the Google one that we found... I'm having issues with the internet. I was not going to have this problem. Anyway. <laughs> you were going to break dance, not me. I'll just hit my back. <clears throat> so, oh, there we go. Yay. Okay, cool. Anyway, we're going to swap over to fast internet. Okay, cool. I think it's this one. Test your mobile site speed. So what's nice about this is it actually gives you an idea of how fast your website is, gives, puts it against the benchmark internationally, and um, it tells you how you can improve it. The one thing that we found with these tests, it doesn't always work well if you're using a caching server. So if you've got uh, Cloudflare or something like that on your website, um, and you, it's caching your site, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go talk to the guys in that room. Um, and it doesn't always pick it up, so your website slows, uh, shows are slowing slower than it actually does. Another thing that can affect these scores is if your page uh, loads asynchronously. So what that means is it doesn't go in an order, things happen at the same time, because uh, then what can happen is your website could actually load at the beginning for what people see, and all the other stuff happens in the background. Um, but to give you an example, cool, so this is not so bad. Um, if we had to go through this thing. Okay, cool. So, your title tag is probably a little bit too long. Um, and the reason why that's probably not a good thing is that when you're on Google search, it will cut it off at a certain point. So, you could be a uh, professional fine art port is what could show up or something like that. Like, it can do funny things. So if you get your character limits, I think it's 60 to 70 characters, so it's probably doing that. Um, then it'll show up nicely on Google search. Uh, you don't have a meta description. So this is basically what gets pulled through into the... Google will pull the next available piece of text on the page when, they, when you come up in search results. So that could be anything. And if it's a photography site, you probably don't have very much text, which means it could be a combination of things and it could end up looking a little bit like gobbledygooky. Um, so I would suggest you want to write a little story about what, if people are going to look for you, what is the one thing um, that's going to be of interest to them? And then remember, the key thing about all of this is relevance. If you're looking for a photographer, what's important to you? What are you looking for? That's what you want to see, because you're going to see a whole bunch of other photographers, and you'll say, well, why, why am I choosing this one out of the search results? So... Your headings aren't, don't have your company name in it. So if Google was to look at the headings on this page, it'd say it's about us. Um, but it's actually about your photography company. Uh, keyword cloud. Cool. So the most said thing is your name of your company. That's great. Uh, you tell people a lot about income streams in August. Uh, free. I don't know if that's what you want to be advertising, but you tell people a lot about free. Um, creative director, that's good. Code words, that's quite cryptic. Um, but you get the idea of what this page is about. It's, it's more about a photography company and less about other sorts of things, like copying strategies or coping strategies. I don't know what you're up to there. Um, creative exploration. Hmm. Well, as long as that's free. Um, <laughs> so I'm just teasing you because I can. Um, but you get the idea. It doesn't take long to work out. Maybe the text on this page needs to be tweaked a little bit to be more about the business. 
Uh, alt tags, well done. You got a redirect, great stuff. Um, the site map on this thing's not always working, so you may or may not have one. And we can go through blocky factors, that's fine. Domain, you've got a blog, cool, it's mobile friendly, excellent. I can't stress the importance of mobile friendliness enough. Um, people, everyone here has a phone, everyone here searches on their phone, but I'm probably certain that not everyone's website works nicely on a phone. If your phone, if your website doesn't work on a phone, people will not use your brand. They'll go there and say these people are unprofessional, they're hard to use, I don't like them. So please, if you don't have a mobile responsive website, please fix that. So well done, Liz. Um, okay, so this asset minimif minification. So this has got to do with things like your pictures are quite large. Uh, funny story, we once had a client in Singapore uh, or Malaysia and they thought it would, they, would, they were the experts and they went and loaded a five megabyte picture onto the homepage of their website and they got a couple of thousand visitors a day and within a couple of hours they'd crashed their website server because they had used all their bandwidth and then they wanted to know why their website broke. So you do want to pay attention to this, especially on mobile data. If you're trying to reach people who are very conscious about their data use, so data in South Africa is expensive, not everyone has access to Wi-Fi, so then you need to pay attention to that because you don't want people to have to pay too much to see your website. Um, there's a nice little program called, I think it's uh, Tiny PNG. Uh, it's got a little cute panda on the page, if you like pandas. Uh, but tinypng.com, I think, will help you to reduce your file sizes. If you've got very big images, they also do JPEGs. So, Liz, you could go and pop some of your Im images through there, and that will help you to get your page loads faster. Cool. Acid compression. So, again, there's a couple of different things that you could do. Uh, you might want to start caching your website. Um, so, for those of you who don't know what caching is, basically what you do is if your, I'll use an extreme example, your website's hosted in America, what you do is you have like a mini temporary version of your website in Johannesburg. So when people look at your website, they look at the Johannesburg version. So it's quicker and closer, because uh, it's closer. And then every now and again, the Johannesburg version updates to the main one. So it, it helps your website to load faster by making it closer. And there's a few other things involved. The guys in the development room can explain them to you. Um, cool, languages, typography. Cool. So yeah, those are a couple of different things. The one thing you would note here is so backlinks. So you don't have very many backlinks. You've got 24 websites that point into you, and you don't have a very high score. So you can sort out the on-page SEO, do some things there, because that's within your control. But if you get like a couple of good links in, um, so maybe if there's like a local magazine or a local newspaper, and you go do a photo shoot for them, and they write an article about you, that's a great way you can get a good quality link. That one link can maybe help you jump your score up. Um, and then other things you can do, um, so they can't find your Facebook page. So I'm sure you've got one. So that one tag that I had about forcing your social recognition, you add that to your website, and now Google will say, oh, that's your Facebook page, and then they can index that as well. Uh, sometimes LinkedIn profiles, Facebook pages, and things like that come up quite high in search results because those are white, quite well-known uh, websites. I hope that was helpful. Uh, Thank you very much.